Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain time cards. Well, let's continue with the rest of this video. But there's something I want to say before I continue with this video. Just to say that we have had another yugi tuber like MBT talk about time cards and how effective they are in the game. But what hasn't been told is what time cards are, how to use them, how they can help you to win games. In this video, I'm going to do just that. I'm going to tell you what time cards are, how to use them, where they are, and how it can impact your game playing moving forward. With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. So let's cover some questions that I'm going to answer in this video. One, what is a time card? Two, how are time cards used? Three, what are the best ways to use time cards? Four, how do we integrate time cards into our decks? So let's go to the first question. One, what is a time card? Well, allow me to answer that for you, my fellow students. A time card is a card in Yu-Gi-Oh that allows you to win in time. Does not sound too bad. First of all, what is time in Yu-Gi-Oh? Over the recent years, Konami has decided to add time as part of the win condition in official tournaments. Now, Yu-Gi-Oh is a game that has been going on for quite a while, especially in tournaments, and usually what happens is out of all the other card games, Yu-Gi-Oh was the one that left last in the building because games took too long. To mitigate that, Konami introduced time rules. And the time rules were that when at the end of the phase, if the player if a player has more life points than the opponent, then that player would win. That is the time rules. When nothing ruins the game plan. So let's go back to the question that I just asked. What is a time card? Well, time a time card is a card or a series of cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that either gain or reduce, inflict damage to your opponent's life points. And these cards tend to be used to win your games in time. Hence, the name Time Card. Okay, I think you've understood what I mean by this. Let's go to the next question. So, we go to question number two. How are time cards used? Okay, let us go to the next slide. As you can see right here, these are the typical examples you will see of time cards that we are commonly used in Yu-Gi-Oh! One of them being Ghost, Sister, and Spooky Dogwood, Firecracker, and Ghost Mourner and Moonlight Chill. Now, I know what you're going to say. Firecracker isn't used, but in my eyes, I think it has a potential for being used and should be considered in the future. Are you serious? First of all, let's talk about Ghost Sister and Spooky Dogwood. In one of the recent tournaments we've had, Spooky Dogwood was an absolute blowout in terms of winning games in time. This card single-handedly has been even voted this year by the community to get banned by for Konami, the players are asking for you to get banned. Just that's just how powerful Spooky Dogwood is. With the Highly unlikely. The current game environment, we have Firecracker, which has fallen out of favor when time rules were first introduced. Firecracker was definitely a card to be used, and now it has fallen out of favor. And then we have Ghost Mourner and Moonlight Chill. Again, another card that we see is being used currently and is still being used to this very day. Now, you might ask yourself, so when are these cards used? Usually the best time to use these cards, time is cold. That is usually the best time to use these cards. But 90% of the time, the best way to use Spooky Dogwood is during the standby phases. Firecracker, you can use it in any phase and Ghost Moon and Moonlight Chill is a bit more flexible, so you can use it in any phase as well. I'll explain that more 
in the next uh, in answering the next questions and all manners of things. But I think that gives you a rough idea on just how you use these three uh, time cards here. So they're mainly used when time is cold, or you can use them when you know your the time counter is running low. Okay, let's go and answer the next question. Let's go to question number three. What are the best ways to use time cards? Before we answer that question, let's understand what time cards are again. Time cards are cards in Yu-Gi-Oh that are used to either gain or inflict damage to your opponent when time is cold. Usually, in an ideal scenario, the best time to use time cards are when time is cold. But ideally, what you should be doing, or what you should learn to do as a Yu-Gi-Oh player, is to use these cards in other, in other opportune times. The truth you need to know. So if we go to the next slide, we see that Ghost Sister Spooky Dogwood, I would say the best time to use this card is during the standby phase, okay? During this time, when you use it in the standby phase, first of the thing, what you're doing, especially even when time isn't cold, is that it gets you into the habit of forcing your opponent to do something to this card. Because if this card, if Spooky Dogwood isn't negated in the standby phase, you're going to be gaining a load of life points that game. Health is a subjective term. I think you mean less nonsense. So whenever time, if time is to be called, right, then your the likelihood of you winning that game is a close to 100%. So common sense has just gone out the window. That's right, because you will have so much more life points than your opponent. And the fact that in Yu-Gi-Oh! Special Summoning Monsters is the air we breathe nowadays, the likelihood of you being of you not gaining life points with Spooky Dogwood is 0% now. Hold on, that's pretty smart. So it is a surefire way of being able to activate this card. In fact, I would say Spooky Dogwood is even better than the Molchami cards that we have right now. Drawing cards means nothing, right, if it doesn't win you the game. Because that's how powerful time cards are in Yu-Gi-Oh! now. It allows you to win a game. Just straight up, just win games. This card, during this year, has been able to just steal games just by its mere existence right now. The fact that we as players, right, are even calling for its potential ban should really illustrate just how powerful Spooky Dogwood is. All right, let's go to the next slide and we talk about Ghost Mona and Moonlight Chill. Now, this is a card I would say, put it in all of your decks, just slap it in there. One of the best things that Ghost Mona offers onto the table is that it's an effect negation, but it also does burn damage when that monster leaves the field equal to that monster's attack points. Nice! This is extremely useful and fantastic, right? One of the reasons why Ghost Mona Moonlit Chill now is such a requirement, and I would say if you're going to higher levels of competitive play to just slap it in to your hand trap lineup is because not only do you get to negate an effect, but you get to burn your opponent while you do it as well. You get to do two things for the price of one. So if time is cold during any time, whether it's game one, game two, or game three, then your likelihood of winning that game is as close as 90%. The 10% for if they negate the card or the other things in in play sure the you can you can use it in any fa phases usage is any phase but there's loads of flexibility here and there's loads of things to consider here right and that's really what needs to be considered the, the amount of phases the flexibility to how you can use this card and the fact that you can deal potentially 3000 points of damage to your opponent because, you know, the attack points of monsters and you go to 3,000 points of damage. But the point is, is that there's loads of potential here. There's loads of things you can be doing here. And if you're going to be playing in higher level tiers of Yu-Gi-Oh, I would say slap this in your deck. I would say time cards are much more important in Yu-Gi-Oh in its current state than cards like Malchami uh, Perelia or Malchami Fuelos. There's no way that I ever believe you! 
Yes, small charm if your loss is good that your opponent can you can draw cards, you know, every time your opponent special summons. But here's the thing. Are you gonna win games just because you draw cards? No. Moonlit Chill, if it resolves and time is cold, guess what? It doesn't matter that your opponent has drawn all these cards. You just win the game if you're your opponent, if you've managed to burn them and time is cold. All that drawing means absolutely nothing. So bear this in mind in high level tier play, time cards basically level the playing field and mean that no amount of, of hand traps that have all these effects of negation matter. Because time cards mean once they resolve, when time is cold, you automatically win. Let's go to the next slide. We have a Firecracker. Firecracker is another card that has not seen play anymore and has definitely fallen out of favor. But I would say is I would say you should put it in your side deck as well. Side that in. While yes, it does have the stipulation that when it is activated that you cannot draw, you skip your next draw phase. But I think you need to look at this card a little bit differently. How are you gonna be using Firecracker? Firecracker is gonna be used specifically when time is cold. So you can use it in any phase. So it doesn't matter, right, that your next turn is gonna be skipped because during the moment that you'll activate Firecracker, guess what? You will win that game. So the a bit, the effect, the negative aspect of not being able to draw on your next turn is gonna be relevant because it doesn't matter. You've just won that game because your opponent has lost 1,000 points of damage. At the time, time was cold. And one of the reasons why hand trap, burn hand trap time cards are much better than extra deck time cards is that when you play a long tournament setting, right, your brain is gonna be fried, the actions that you do are not going to be so precise, and it's gonna be much easier to remember activating cards from your deck than going into your extra deck and doing those series of actions. Those are gonna be harder to remember, harder to do. Whereas your likelihood of winning with hand trap time cards like Firecracker, Ghost Mona, Moonlit Chill, and Ghost uh, Nan Spooky Dogwood, the likelihood of you winning with these cards is as close to 100%. Same with Firecracker. Whereas with extra deck negates, unless the archetype itself has a, that you're playing has a burn card in itself that plays into it naturally, then you're not going to be really winning with time, with extra deck uh, time cards. Bear that in mind. While it is possible, but the longer the tournament that you're in is in for, then you are at a disadvantage. So usually bear this in mind when it comes to playing time cards. You need to be strategic. And it is usually, I would say as a Yu-Gi-Oh Sensei, better to have hand trap time cards than having extra deck time cards. Okay, let's move on to the next question. And so we have the final question. Question number four, how do we integrate time cards into our decks? First of all, I would say the best way to integrate time cards are the hand trap time cards. These include Ghost Sister Spooky Dogwood, Ghost Moona Moonlit Chill, and Firecracker. In my eyes, I would say in putting in Ghost to Spooky Dogwood and Moonlight Chill, along with the Effect Veiler and Imperm, and other useful, and then after Imperm, you put the useful hand traps that are going to be useful to target for the meta that you're currently in, the competitive scene, that would should cover all your bases and you should be fine. Now, why do I say main deck Spooky Dogwood and main deck Ghost Mona, Moonlit Chill. The reasons why I say this is because it keeps you in a good place, especially as the tournament goes on. We can't do many things you can't even think of. Whatever happens in that tournament, you knowing the fact that you can keep activating that, uh, Dogwood and Moonlit Chill, means that you are always in every turn, every game, baiting out negates. Because it doesn't, because here's the thing, 
if Spooky Dogwood ever resolves in any game, whether it's game one, game two, game three, your opponent is losing that game. That's kind of the truth! Right? Especially for the fact that time is cold. Remember that in Yu-Gi-Oh! we only have 45 minutes, okay? And combo decks right now usually take around 30, you know, 20, 30 minutes to usually, usually, um, even if you're a fast player, to complete their combo. So the likelihood of you being of you winning with Dogwood or Moonlit Chill is so high. Stacked with you for you winning with these uh, hand trap time cards, that is an actual crime in my eyes to not put these into your deck. But you say, but Sensei, we have a uh, Molchami Fuel Loss, we have Molchami Pirelia. But here's the thing do you think Molchami Fuel Loss and Molchami Pirelia in the TCG is going to win you games? What the hell does that even mean? I mean, it's nice that you're able to draw cards every time your opponent special summons. I guess it's cool. But if time is cold and you know, and no one has dealt damage to each other, that's just a draw. Whereas with the time card, if that card, if that um, fuel loss or Pirelia was a spooky dog, wood or moonlit chill or a firecracker, guess what? That game is yours and you just win the game. There are times when you go to a higher competitive scene, you need surefire victories. You don't need ifs or buts or ways that mistakes can be made. Sometimes you just need a card that just wins you games straight out the gate. And that's where time cards come in. And this is why I say these three cards are vital, I would say, in your, in your, in your main deck. Um, Firecracker, you know, put it in the side, but I'll definitely recommend Dogwood and Moonlit Chill with Firecracker in your side deck. Let's move on to the next slide and we see and we'll go to the Synchro side of things. Now, with your Synchro side of things, especially in your extra deck, these are the cards that I have um, calculated here that are going to be best considering the levels of Synchros that are easy to make for your respective deck. If you can make Synchro 4s easily, then it's usually best to make Cupid Pitch. Cupid Pitch, Synchro into another card, um, and then you can deal damage. If it's a Synchro 5, 500, Synchro 6, 600, you get the general idea. Magical Android is another great card to use. Yes, it does um, mean you only gain life points in the end phase, and so usually I wouldn't recommend it. Cupid Pitch, I would only recommend if you're a combo deck and your combo deck that is heavy on the Synchro side. We have uh, uh, Blackwing, Northong, the Starlight. I would definitely recommend this if making Synchro Sixes is something that you can do quite easily in your deck. It's a fantastic time card to have in your deck, especially in the side. Because on special, on Synchro Summon, it simply just inflicts 800 points of damage. Any other effects that it has there is irrelevant. The fact that you just get to just on summon inflict 800 points of damage is just really, really good, especially for winning in time. Remember, when you are, time cards should fulfill a specific purpose. They should be able to deal damage or gain life points as quickly and as easily as possible. Facts. With the minimal amount of effects on that. Right, let's move on to Synchro 8s and Synchro 7s. So the best Synchro 8 to be using will be Scarlight, the uh, Red Dragon Archfiend. Fantastic card. When it's Synchro Summoned, simply destroy all special monsters and deal 500 for each one. Fantastic card, great way to win in time. And we have Dark Strike Fighter. Again, a fantastic Synchro 7. Yes, it is a bit slow, but you know what? Slow is best. Slow and steady wins the race, and we have Dark Strike Fighter activate its effect, and you can win in time right there. So these are the best synchros uh, going with their respective levels that you need to be having in your extra. If it's easy for you to make synchro sevens, then Dark Strike Fighter is a great card in your side deck so that you can burn your opponent 
in time. Um, the other card that is good for Synchro 8s especially is Scarlight or Dragon Archfiend. If, if you need uh, the Blackwing, Northung, the Starlight for Synchro 6s, Magical Android for level 5s, and Cupid Pitch for level 4, especially if you're a combo deck. Let's move on to the XYZ lineup. So, if you are a deck especially that can make rank 3s pretty easily, and you tend to have loads of banished cards in your in your banish in your in your banishment, then Submersible Carrier Aero Shark is a fantastic card. As you can see with its effect right there, being able to just deal 100 points of damage for each of your banished monsters, fantastic, great. We have number 61, Volcasaurus. Again, fantastic card. Um, you're able to just deal damage to your opponent by targeting a face-up monster your opponent controls. Great side card, especially for any XYZ deck, or if you can make rank fives quite easily, slap it in in your side deck, great. Now, if you're a rank 10 specialist, then this is the card for you. We have Super Dreadnought Real Cannon Gustav Max, fantastic card. Being able to just deal 2,000 points of damage should not be understated here. Fantastic card, great card, Definitely consider it if rank 10s are your specialty. However, if we're going to, if rank 4s are where it's at, and that's how you make cards quite easily, and you can make rank 4s quite easily, Gagaga -ga Cowboy is the card for you. And don't underestimate Gagaga -ga Cowboy, especially during the XYZ era, the amount of games that Cowboy has won and has been a competitive staple during the XYZ era and just winning games straight up, even before Time Worlds existed, Cowboy is the card to go for. And finally, for rank 7s, we have Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. For fantastic card, if you can make level 7s or you put leave level 7s on the board quite easily, Red Eyes Flare is there to help you win those games. Okay? Fantastic card. And that is what I would say for your XYZ lineup, especially when it comes to time cards. Okay? I think that's all I've got to mention here. So let's move on to the next slide and we go to the link lineup. When it comes to the link lineup, there's not a lot to say here. Um, generically, you've only got, we've, we've, you've only got Topologic Trace Bainer, um, which can allow you to just banish, um, you know, as many spells or traps on the field, deal 500 for each one. And you have Cosmic Tree Emma still. This is essentially the spooky non dogwood but as a main deck monster now it's generic enough so you can make it again would be best in a plant deck but sometimes things are not the best um it's a fact that as you can see there is every time your opponent special summons you gain life points equal to their that monster's attack and that can be significantly great as it can eat and negate it's just a bait card but there's loads of things going for it sure you sure you pay life points by 1000 so you can boost this card so it can get to like what seventh uh, 5000 attack points but leaving that aside it's just a great time card in general and that's what you need in a time card you need a card that just is able to get you life points as quickly and as easily as possible. And so that is your link lineup right there. And I think with that being said, I will head to the conclusion. So let's go over the overall conclusion. So what does it mean to have time cards? Well, in Yu-Gi-Oh, as I've showed you with synchros, um, XYZs and links, uh, fusions don't tend to have, uh, we don't have, I think, generic cards that can be used to burn cards unless it comes from a archetype eccentric card itself. But the point is, is that when you're utilizing time cards, make sure that they're easy to use. Make sure that they're, they're like Blackwing Northung that just summoning them inflicts the damage or increases your life points. You want them to be as easy and as hassle-free as possible. At the same time, it is usually best to have them be hand trap uh, time cards. If your, arch if your archetype that you're playing in archetype has uh, gains life points or deals damage to your opponent, make sure to use those 
cards as well, whatever cards they are, especially if they're hand trap focused, fantastic. Another thing I'd like to say as a Yu-Gi-Oh sensei is that time cards are here to stay, obviously, but you should emphasize them more rather than cards that negate. While yes, negation is really good as we move forward into Yu-Gi-Oh, realize now that combo decks are taking loads are now being made much more complicated than they were before, and they're taking much more time. So it's best to add pressure to your opponent. And having hand trap time cards are fantastic ways of adding pressure to your opponent. Not only can they bait out effects because they must be negated. Here's the thing, unlike negation, negation in Yu-Gi-Oh! now I would say is not such a big deal. Um, you know, your opponent has a negate, they negate your card, uh, who cares, right? But the thing is, if a time card goes through and successfully resolves, then the ability of that game or whatever that game's time is at the moment could potentially mean a loss for your opponent. If you successfully resolve Spooky Dogwood, then it doesn't matter what board, what uh, negate board your opponent has made. If time is cold, guess what? You are winning that game because you successfully resolved Spooky Dogwood. I think you need to look at time cards in Yu-Gi-Oh, my fellow students, as the ultimate, as the ultimate cards that level the playing field. Because it doesn't matter what board or what cards or what expensive cards your opponents get or what absurd effects are, are in the game now, as long as the time rule exists, this is a feature now that every player can use and every player can win through. This is, the, this is now where we are all equal under time rules. Everyone can use it to their advantage. Everyone can win with this rule. And now you cannot say that Yu-Gi-Oh! is an unfair game because we are all equal. We are all vulnerable under time rules. And that is what I want to uh, come to with this conclusion, that time rules have basically leveled the playing field and have made it that Yu-Gi-Oh! is now not a game based off of having the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, for a long time, before Time Rules existed, Yu-Gi-Oh! was a game that was based off of negation. I think I've said this before and I've said this many times, that negation was part of the things that we needed to get rid of. And I still stick to that notion that we should still get rid of cards generic negates in the game i am still i still stick to that stance i do not have issues with generic attribute negation as those to me are balanced why because generic type not attribute but generic type negations require much more setup and are not something that you can just slap onto a board that easily okay that's really what it comes down to. And I think with that being said, I'll end this topic here. Tune in next time as, you, as I, a Yu-Gi-Oh! Sensei, will talk about more things Yu-Gi-Oh! related. Hope to see you soon. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.